New Orleans no, defense. I mean, I think certainly, yeah. I mean, give them credit, and you know, we're we're at fault, you know, the same way. It's um, when when you talk about the the first key is being able to, you know, attack the road environment um, and, and come out and uh, great field position, um, and and then the pre snap penalties, which was something that you know we practiced and talked about and worked on and. You know, not being able to do that, um, you know, just puts you behind. You know, first and 15 is a tough place to be. Um, not that it can't be overcome, but certainly don't want to start drives like that or start them uh, four times like that. So, um, yeah, there's some rust, some some good execution, and some some execution that, that has to improve. And, um, and I'm sure that and I'm positive that it will. Well, I don't think it's a new feature of the offense. We're just trying to get everybody involved and, you know, I mean, think continue to find ways to, to get Tajay and Derek in there. Um, Derek certainly um, gave us a chance to win in his performance, and, and so did Tajay. You know, tried to hit him a few times down the field. Um, certainly his, his average when he carried the football um, would lend itself to, to tell us that, that he has to carry it more and, you know, try to continue to find ways to get both of them involved at the same time and in same package and whatever it may be. In the past, you know, you guys get into that four-minute offense with that game being close. One of the trademarks has been Derrick Henry in the fourth quarter. He only got three carries there. Was there anything behind that? Was there a reason why you know he wasn't featured as much? No, not specifically. We weren't in that you know four-minute mode. We were trying to go score. You know, what I mean, I wish that. I wish that we were, you know, I wish that, um, you know, we were able to, to be in that mode. But, no, you know, I mean, just trying to, to get in the flow of the game and some of the things that have been working and then, you know, being being behind, you know, certainly needing a touchdown and then the long yardage and, you know, it kind of takes them a little bit out of the game. And well, it'll, it'll be, you know, Derek will be a, a, a large part of what we do. Um, but, but when you get into third and longs and you get into second and 15s and, you know, we had the second and 20 that we threw him a, a swing pass to, um, you know, he's, he's going to continue to help us. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I wish that I knew. I wish that I could tell you. We have to be better. Ryan has to be better. Um, we, we have to uh, hit guys that are open and we, we can't. We, we can't force the ball into double coverage. Um, you know, and so we have to, you know, give them cleaner pockets like we gave them in the second half earlier. You know, there were there was some of that. I think, you know, like, again, we can point to the, when, the, when a play goes bad, we can, we can point to a lot of different things. But, uh, you know, we, we have to be better. We can't, we can't turn the football over or we can't get punts blocked and on and on and on. Might he have been over-determined to, to get the ball to DeAndre? Uh, I mean, I think maybe, you know, we, we, we have, you know, when you, when you play quarterback, there's, you know, you can't just sit there and, you know, it's a yes, no, you're going to go to a side and, and obviously, um, you know, if the DB's underneath, we, we probably don't want to throw a back shoulder. We can't throw a back shoulder. Um, I'm okay with the decision, you know, when you, when you're over here and, you know, you're, you're, you're going to. You're going to give DeAndre a chance, but you got to give him a better chance. And, you know, but I, I just think that there's times where if guys double covered, we, we certainly need to progress through. And to progress through, you have to have a, you know, pass protection to be able to take an extra hit or to be able to come back and, and, and work work the backside. After the game or this morning, just how's he kind of responded after yesterday? Well, I mean, he's already, you know, been in here with the receivers and, you know, and been in here with the coaches, and and he'll respond like like he has. He's he's been a great competitor for us. He's been unbelievably tough and and determined. And you know, I'm I'm positive that uh, those those results will 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 be different. And the trainers look like he uh, was recovered well enough from the knee injury, or was he having any issues in terms of separation and those sorts of things? Well, I mean, there were times that trailing was open. There was times that trailing was open and caught the ball. There was times that he was open and unfortunately dropped the one. Um, trailing is going to be a big part of what we do. Um, 
you know, moving forward and, and just understanding, you know, where he fits for us and what he can do to help us. And, you know, that's – I've tried to explain to every skilled player on our team, you, you know, when it's a pass, your job is to, to get open and you can't control uh, whether you get the ball or not. The only thing that you can control is, is that you're open. And sometimes that he, you know, he was, and sometimes that they were, you know, they'll give them credit. They, they played, you know, on body and, and they, you know, you know, played square and, and forced us to, you know, get open. In those type of situations with personnel, I know in the past, like Tony Dues would communicate with Derek, hey, you're out, you're in, et cetera. With a new coach, how, how does that work now? I knew with, with Coach Otten now in, in the mix. The same way, but, you know, J.O.'s upstairs and Tony handles, you know, substitution and, you know, we have different packages that we call on or the coordinator calls on that, that he wants in the game and, you know, those guys go in there and sub or if Derek, you know, has a 46-yard screen pass and, and needs a break, then Derek will, you know, kind of do that as well. Were you on the fence when you declined the offensive poll? Yeah, you know, I think so. You know, just... Figuring a rookie kicker, 52-yarder, you know, wasn't thrilled with the third down, you know, them getting down there. Um, so I made a decision, and he made the kick. You touched on it a bit yesterday, but do you mind elaborating a little bit on that difficult decision with the fifth field goal as well and kind of uh, what went into that? Well, I think at the time it wasn't a difficult decision. Um, you know, I thought our chances um, and still believe that is to, to – to play defense with three timeouts and, and get the ball back with our offense with one timeout, get the ball somehow into the 35-yard line and make a kick. And we had, had converted two third downs and fourth and six with that amount of space for them to cover. Um, I, I didn't think that that, that was going to be our best way to, to win the football game. I, I believe our best way to win that game would have been to play defense, stop them, which we didn't do, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, and then somehow find a way to make a kick. In that thought process, was where the ball was on the field play at all, you know, like had you not gotten it, they would have been inside their 10-yard line in all likelihood. Does then how they handle that? No, because, again, we're still going to probably – you still would need a touchdown and you'd still need, you know, at, at least 65 yards. No, that was it was our thought process was to use the two-minute warning, have a timeout for our offense, um, you know, and, and be able to move the ball, you know, 40 yards to, to be able to, to attempt a field goal. That decision, and that was all field, not concerned about analytics. You're just looking at the field again. Well, I mean, you, you can run the numbers, but also I think that there's a certain level of we all watch the same game. And um, points were hard to come by. You know, both defenses were, were, were doing a nice job and competing and getting red zone stops. The, you know, they got a third and seven that they they scored a touchdown on. We got lackadaisical. But uh, just the, the flow of the game and, and the way that I felt like what our best chance for victory was, was to, to do that, uh, to make the kick, to cover the kickoff, um, use the two-minute warning, and, and, you know, get a stop. What kind of drive did you get on that uh, interception fumble play? And I'm sure you saw the Jacksonville game yesterday, almost an identical play that went the other way. What did they tell you about why they did why they didn't let that play out, and why they didn't reverse the call? Afterwards? Never talked to Ron. Um, certainly not going to reverse it in replay. Um, those are you, you, you're going to watch throughout the league. Next week it's going to be a fumble. The week after that it's going to be an incompletion. The week after that it's going to be a fumble. And the, the what they're going to tell you in replay is that the call on the field matters. The call on the field is important. Um, I would love for it to let it play out and go to replay. Um, you know, showed a clip last year, same exact situation. I think it was week one. I think it was the Chargers and, and Washington, you know, ball on the ground. And they, every player on our team, I'm like, is it a fumble or an incomplete? And they say, we don't know. And I said, that's exactly right. Like, they, they know that. They know that you, they're not sure. So Kevin and everybody responded exactly how we want them to. Uh, knew that they blew it dead, so knew that we would just get the ball at the spot, but also knew that it was going to be hard to reverse and replay because of what the call on the field was. It was a lot of 
like a Dobbs play last year. You've, you've pleaded for more consistency. Um, I, it's like going to be the di next week. There's going to be another one, guys. I don't know what to tell you. You know, what I mean, it's like I can't. That's, there's nothing I can do. I, there is nothing I can do. Well, speed of the game and let it let it go to replay and maybe, you know, let them all go to replay and and let replay, you know, decide and 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 if maybe clear and obvious or you know doesn't doesn't get it done then we need a different term because a lot of these quarterback you know I mean they're all happening you know those are the ones that are hard is is the ball in the hand is it coming forward um and and I can see where the conflict occurs it's it's not why we lost the game clarity from as a member of the competition committee I, I just want them to be decisive and and, and want them to, to I would like for them to um if they're not sure you know allow replay to sort it out. That's why we play to the recovery of the ball and, and not the whistle or anything like that. To you, is there a clear distinction between a continuation of a pass and, and the hand pushing a fumbled ball? I think it's a, I think it's a difficult uh, job on the field. I think when you look at it in replay, it becomes somewhat reasonable to expect that you could determine whether it was a forward pass or a fumble. But I know, having stood back behind the quarterback, that that is m more difficult than some other calls. Are the officials not instructed to then, in, when in doubt, you guys would have to. You guys can just ask the league about what they instruct the officials to do. Well, the, I mean, I, I certainly am not going to be able to speak for them. I apologize. Like, uh, whatever the call is, we're going to have to adjust to it and figure it out. But if they want to talk to you, they they're happy to talk to you. Do you think Christian, Joseph Harold's first game back, and, and might it take him a little bit of time to, to kind of get back to full form? Well, um, you know, we, we've expected a lot from Harold, and he does a lot for us, and he'll have to continue, you know, to, to help us and, and, and will, you know, and, and be more impactful. And, you know, they, they chipped him a couple times, and, you know, we was able to get in there a few times, and we just, you know, I, I, we're expecting, and we – we, we, we are positive that we'll get good things from Harold. What did you see in the week to get a lot of looks from Kiko when he was the elevation and maybe had some other guys that were active that you know weren't playing as much as he was? Oh, man. Pecco's always been somebody that's you know done it exactly the way we need it to be done and can play multiple positions. Um, and so he can rotate in there for Tier or Jeff and you know play in base. Decided to take four guys to to the game, and that may change based on practice, game plan, you know, who we have. But you know, he's always you know been a dependable player and, and somebody that uh, can can play multiple positions. Hard to see as disruptive as the guys you're seeing maybe for week one. Uh, well, I thought him and Danico, uh, you know, certainly. Uh, Affected a quarterback and, and made plays on the football. Danico, you know, had some some tackle for loss and showed up in the backfield and, and set the edge when we needed to. And 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 both of them, you know, factored. And that was uh, that was you know really good to see. We'll need a lot of it. But uh, th those were the camps. Those guys had those type of camps, and so we'll need to you know we'll need as much of that as we can get. You said you take a guy back into the game when they tell you they can come back into the game. Uh, in hindsight, was Christian equipped to come back in the game? He was kind of galloping with a limp there. I, I mean, when when the when we see him run on the sidelines and the trainer tells me he's cleared, um, you know, he was playing on third down in, in the second half. You know, we'll see where he is going forward. How did the two tackles look in their first outing, uh, Dillard and Hubbard? Well, I thought that they, uh, you know, Dre, we talked about it, you know, just probably – um, a few sets that were a little soft, maybe just not knowing or not feeling him where he was. I think after we continued to bring it to his attention and, and, and realized that, that he wasn't doing a good enough job of setting the width of the pocket, thought it improved. I thought there were some, you know, some good snaps of him in the run game. I thought Chris um, d did a nice job over there on, on Cam Jordan thought when the end tried to spike or got a little heavy on when Jordan got a little heavy on Chris he he went and captured the outside number and, and gave him a shove and, and Derek ran outside for 15 or 16 yards um, 
but there was also some there were some good plays and some bad plays and you know but I thought it was a good place to start I loved how they responded in the second half and, and we had some some good pockets in the second half probably better so than in the first half What's the proper technique Mike for a corner or a DB to defend a double move by a receiver not look in the backfield start there and yeah, play to man and you know if you if you break on the first move and you go through to man you you know it's it's an illegal contact or a holding um but but certainly um w w nobody's trying to defend a double move by looking in the backfield that that'd be the most important place to start what did you make of the way your secondary played overall in this game uh i i think it has to be better it has to improve i think we need to we need to challenge we need to play square you know if these are the rules which we try to explain that you know, they put out an officials video and teaching the officials and they've sent it to us and the teams which is great that if you're square or you're playing the football that you're going to be afforded a certain level of you know leeway just like the the interception down there with Chris Moore guy was playing the football there's a lot of contact and hey that, that's what it is and so we know that and we have to play that same way Oh, and two to seven and three the year before, oh, and one to 12 and five. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Well, it, it's a long season, Corey, and, and it was a great test of, of, I think, a good football team uh, on the road in, in an unbelievable environment. Could have, could have been a lot better, could have been a lot worse. Our job is to win the game. We didn't. Um, but our guys fight, they compete. And uh, the team, you know, we need to keep improving. And we say this all the time, the teams that improve are going to be the ones that are playing in January. You know, 49ers and, and, you know, talking with Brunskill after the game, he's like, hey, coach, you know, and, and I love getting to know Daniel and his story and just how he's gotten into this league. He's like, hey, coach, 49ers, you know, they, they lost uh, week one in Chicago and uh, we were playing late in the year. And I said, I appreciate you reminding me of that, Daniel. Why do you think uh, week one has a tendency to do that throughout the league where you get some surprising results every year that seemingly aren't indicative of what a team ends up being? So in your experience, well, why is it I, difficult? Um, because this is a unique league. You know, this is a unique league. It's an 8-8 eight and eight league. 9-8, and 8-9, eight, eight and however you want to put it now with 17 games. But that's what the structure is. The structure is designed – uh, for parity and you know maybe there's teams that are at full strength or there's teams that maybe didn't quite prepare or somebody hit some plays that you know they didn't see in in, in practice or you know teams continue to get better uh, as the season goes on maybe they threw a different coverage at somebody uh, the, the the ball security right and you talk about maybe there's some some fumbles or certain in our case in interceptions Right, that that lead, um, you know, block punt, right? The things that we we talked about that would that would really hurt us, um, that show up in week one, you know, just because, you know, you're playing 70 snaps and it's it's just it's different than than training camp and preseason. Just get beat underneath. I thought Shig could have could have come out and help him a little bit, but you know, can't be up and under everybody that's been here that's in protection, whether it's an offensive lineman, a running back, or somebody on the punt team, you know, we have to block inside out. It was one of our special team's keys. Knew that they would rush punts, whether it was JT Gray, who ultimately didn't play, whether it was uh, Taysom Hill uh, or Bond or you know, Granderson, you know, that was something that they did. They did it on field goals. They did it on punts. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't get it done. First game? I thought pretty good. You know, I thought pretty good. There's a couple of times where he could have been better in protection, but I would say that, you know, Peter is, you know, he's he's fit for this league. You know, it's just uh, he's got, you know, good play strength and, you know, good some good finishes where he was moving people and, you know, pass protection when he gets his hands inside on them and be able to sit down in the middle. Uh, they got us on a, on a game there where, you know, we, we need to be better. I think it's a good start. What about the red zone? I mean, after the last game of the game, what were some of the things that were going wrong there? Penalties, you know, penalties, right? Um, you know, the 
it didn't ex didn't execute. You know, it's just tough. We got behind the sticks, and you know, so we get the ball when we, whenever we get it. You know, we lose yardage. You know, we get down the other time, and it's second and twenty, right? Um, long yardage situations in a red zone are tough. There's just not a lot, a whole lot of space, and every yard is critical. We talked about that. So self-inflicted wounds, and then you know, give them a, um, credit as well. Beyond, beyond being behind the sticks. Third and eight, you know, an average of third and eight on third down. You want to be better on third down. Don't have him be so long. Nick Holt, as, <clears throat> as you expected him to be when you signed him? Yeah, I mean, five for five. I wish that he was six for six. Tim, Tim, Tim uh, when the coin toss of the head or tails called, I, you know what? I don't know if he typed on his little. I don't know if he typed on his tablet, heads or tails for KB. But um, that was a unique moment for me to be able to uh, see Tim and Steve there um, together before the game. And you know, Steve talks with an interpreter as his aide that he moves her, his eyes and she knows what he's saying. And that was uh, that was cool for me to to communicate with him through her. And then obviously. Uh, you know, Timmy in his tablet. So, you know, hopefully that brought some awareness uh, to, to an unbelievable disease, but also to two great uh, alumni uh, of the National Football League. Would you say that the way things went with Henry in, in the fourth quarter or just the second half, would you say that that's an outlier, like something that Probably, doesn't Probably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, you know, th those are something like we, we need – we're going to need – a. Derek and we're going to need everybody and in, in, in making sure that that we get into a rhythm and that we figure out things that we can do uh, consistently uh, and Derek will be a, a huge part of that I I, I, I can assure you Thanks, guys. appreciate Thanks. it guys Thanks, Thanks, Mike. Mike. well I mean with the start of the season I, I mean there, there's still a lot to clean up um, the Saints I mean that was a, that's a big test to go into a stadium like that um, I've, I've told a few people this but I mean, that's probably one of the top five loudest places or toughest environments to be in. Um, so uh, we definitely have a lot to learn. Um, we had a few false starts early on in the game, and you can accredit that to the noise. I mean, it's definitely tough, especially the wider out you get. A um, couple of miscommunications on a couple things. Um, so we got we got to continue build on that and be able to take. I mean, you can't go back and change the outcome of the game, but what we can do is learn. And that's a great game, great environment to learn from because, I mean, there's not a lot a lot of places. I mean, Chiefs, Seattle, um, they get, like, much louder than that. So, I mean, to be able to have that and then build on that going forward, I think that's going to be huge. Brent said you were quick to point out, had mentioned to him that the Niners lost the Chicago game opening mm -hmm. day last year and it didn't, didn't have a bearing on, on your ultimate fate. And he said he appreciated the reminder of that. Um, what were you guys thinking last year when, when you went through that one? Um, I mean, it, it was a, it was almost kind of similar uh, um, situation. We had a young team, um, a lot of new guys uh, to the team, and you know they had they we we had a lot to learn at that point in the game, um, and and so I mean at the end of the day, like it's the NFL. I think any team can go out there and beat any team. It doesn't matter if you're favored by 20 points or not. Like it's, you know, the, it's it's the NFL. So there's every team is capable of beating anybody. Um, they have the star talent, and if if they play the right and they don't make the mistakes, you know, they can go out and beat anybody. So I think at the end of the day, um, I think we made more mistakes than the Saints. Uh, were they perfect? No, but at the same time, you know, they, they were able to capitalize a couple times on some things, and we didn't capitalize on some of the things that, you know, could have won us the game. And, I mean, for a one-point game to be decided, you know, there, any play could have changed that outcome. Um, so I think uh, at the end of the day, we have a lot to clean up. And uh, if we can learn from those things, that's what's going to make the season uh, great going forward. And, and that's, I think, any game in the NFL, you what you can learn from the game is is what we can take advantage of um but, but like the chicago one the, the niners learned a lot and they were able to change their season and go to the nfc championship when a lot of people wouldn't have thought they did that on a third quarterback but they still were able to do that so i mean anything can happen you can make things happen how much can you trust 
ask you the most about uh, Peter Skoronsky. Is he kind of still gains his footing uh, in the league? Um, I mean, Peter's um, – I mean, it's not often where you get rookies just able to come in, learn, like, you know, tough offense and, and be able to go against tough players and then just kind of keep picking up things. And I think Peter's doing a really good job – of every time, he, if he gets beat on something, he's learning from that and being able to correct things very fast. And then also, I think he's very poised for a, a young fellow. Usually, young players, they're kind of, you know, they their emotions are controlling most of those things. So, you know, you get out in an environment like the Saints, you know, that's when they start panicking, making more mistakes. It's not really them making the mistake, it's just kind of their emotional. And so they're kind of, um, just kind of getting a mistake from that, but uh, I think I think Peter does a great job staying poised, staying level-headed, and be able to move on. And if someone was to beat him, he doesn't get really flustered from that. And so he's, he, you know, that that's really that makes a really good player because I mean, you're going to get beat from time to time, and be able to you know take that, move on, and keep going and playing and keep improving. I think that's what he's done really well. Get a whole lot of chances in the, in the running game, but what did you think of, of run blocking in general and kind of the cohesion that? bunch of new guys had in that first game? Um, I think I, I know I had one block for sure that could have been cleaned up. Um, I think there's a there's a few things, but I mean, um, in the run game, we just got to keep pounding it. They did a really good job of um, taking away some of our outside zone games by putting out the three D lineman and they would spike the three technique to the side that we were running a little bit so that the linebacker can run free and then we couldn't get out to the, the linebackers. They were making it really hard for our double teams to get off to them. Um, but uh, I mean, they had some things schemed up and then we just got to be able to execute and then go onto the sideline, figure out what they're doing and find an adjustment to what they're doing. And that, that's, you know, the NFL. And I think we, we did an all right job. And uh, I thought the, the running backs did a hell of a job running it. Um, Tajay got out on that one. You could see his, you know, explosiveness. That was awesome to see. Um, Derek was, I mean, he's always falling forward. That, I mean, you love a back like that. I mean, if it's blocked up for one, he's falling forward for three or something. So, I mean, he was doing an amazing job with that. And I think we just kind of keep pounding it and then um, just kind of clean up where we can. Because there was a few where we could have maybe broke Derek free. We're just one away or um, backside end is, you know, coming like unblocked because he's the last guy that we can't block. And if we can find a way to create a little bit more space so he can just kind of get maybe a toe tackle to where he can break that and get out, I mean, we'd be on the safety really quick. So I think there's a few runs that were really close. Um, and we just got to keep cleaning up what we can. How do you feel like the communication went in Neil's first uh, prolonged exposure together as a unit? Um, the communication, I think it was all right. I think there was definitely some times. Um, there was the, the delay of game. Uh, Ryan's clapping. Um, I got to do a jo better job of when I'm looking back, if nobody can hear that clap, I got to just start yelling at the guys, hey, we got to go, we got to go. But we were in a double cadence kind of thing, um, and, and that kind of got us. Um, I think uh, we can do a better job of communicating which linebackers we're going to, so everybody's on the same page a few times. Um, but uh, I, I think for for that environment and for a lot of new guys, um, and I'm not going to say it was just bad, just because I mean that's tough to go in that with a, with all that. And I think a lot of guys were able to you know to to get on the right page for the most part, but we still have to clean up because I mean at the end of the day we lost. And there were a few plays where if we can get on the right page, we can make a, a better play out of that. And that could have been the deciding factor. Like I said, one point game, any any one play could have changed the game. When you have a, a back like Derek, in some of those situations you mentioned, like it's not blocked up all the way, somebody misses, it's a minus game, then it's, it's a zero game, then it goes for 40. Mm -hmm. Does it require like more patience for a, a back like that? Um, but what, what do you mean by patience? Like. Mm -hmm. All I had to do was, you know, go uh, dig out that, that linebacker or, or move that defensive end or whatnot. Oh, I got you. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes, uh, I mean, with a guy like that, you want to do it, but also, like, you don't want to take advantage of Derek all the time because, like, at the end, of the, we have a long season ahead, so we're not trying to just, you know, pound Derek, you know, until he can't. So, um I think at the the end of the day, we just have to do a better job of cleaning up and trying to do our part of making sure that he's free. Um, but yeah, I mean, just getting you. I mean, you notice on the screen and a few other times, like you get him the ball, he has a chance to take it all the way. And so um, we definitely have to be able to to have the ability to be like, you know what, 
you know, they're, they're doing a good job of stopping us and maybe we're making a few mistakes here too, but let's get this cleaned up and let's see if we can maybe get one of those to pop. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, you don't want Derek run it 50 times. I mean, that'd be awesome. But at the same time, that's not fair to Derek, but at the same, like, we just gotta kind of keep going with it. So, I mean, I guess you could say a little patience would be nice, but, um, but at the same time, it's just, you know, we, we got to go out there and execute and everybody's got to do their job. And I think, um, if everybody else can do their job, we can, you know, take a little bit off of them and then we have them for later in the season when we're going to need them the most. I mean, you did that 50 times, but we only had five carries in the second half. I know you love to run block. I think just about every lineman has said, I love to run block. That's why you come and play for the Titans. Yeah. Any disappointment that you weren't able to do it or it wasn't called to do it a little bit more in the second half yesterday? I mean, I'm not going to say there's, there's disappointment at the end of the day on um, a lot of those plays, there were some plays where we still had like opportunities, even without Derek. I mean, we'd love to have have him out there um, and continue. But I mean, you you guys could all see Tajay. Tajay was explosive. Tajay was picking up. There was a one where they had an end stunt, and Cam Jordan. We were watching it today. Cam Jordan came around, and that's not Tajay's block, but he came in there and helped. You know, because, I mean, those games are hard to pick up. And instead of the center coming off late, and where Cam could maybe be a factor, Tajay just stoned him. So I mean. I don't know if it's really like, you know, we're keeping Derek off the field or anything. It's just like, I mean, Tajay's done an amazing job stepping up. So he's been able to get that opportunity to get some plays out there. So I think um, that might play into it. But I, I mean, at the end of the day, that's not my job of who's out there and who's not. Um, just got to block for what, what's out there. But I mean, I think we, we've got some phenomenal guys. And I mean, um, Jules, he made the team because of what he did in the preseason. I mean, we watched him ball out preseason. So we got three guys that can really, we give those guys an opportunity. They can make some plays. So I think they were just kind of probably just, you know, trying to keep those guys fresh throughout the game and trying to keep getting them in and making sure every time they're in, they're fresh and we're not, you know, wearing one of them down. Um, and that, that probably was what played into it. But I mean, um, I think all three of those guys earned uh, the right to be out there. Um, so I think we just got to keep going. And like I said, it's a, it was a one point game. So I don't know if that was the deciding factor or anything. I think there was plenty of opportunities to make some big plays and we just happened to miss our opportunities and they capitalized on one of their opportunities and they were able to get a touchdown and win the game. And I think that's what it came down to. So we just got to do better as a whole unit um, to just make, make that one play to make the difference. Said to, towards the side that you guys are trying to run to yeah, the they, three tech, yeah, yeah. Or did they have a, a little bit of an indication at times where they thought that you guys were going to run? Is that? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what. Um, I mean, every once in a while you got teams that are able to have some tells or something, but um, but yeah, they had a, they had a few times where they just kind of made it hard getting it to the the backers um, late in the game. They they had uh, a perfect end spike on the outside zone of the right. And then uh, they were able to have their DB come down and fill. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if they had to tell or if I mean, they could have got just lucky. Sometimes, you know, defense line, like maybe they weren't even told to do that. They just do something sometimes. So, like, uh, um, I don't know whether it was called by them and they had to tell or if they, you know, happened to fall into it. Um, but they just happened to make the, the right plays when they needed to and we didn't. So, um, we just got to, you know, get better and capitalize on it. Grades itself on pass protection and things like that. Are you as critical of yourself if the quarterback is flushed or hit as you are if he's sacked? Um, I mean, for me, I mean, I'm critical if our feet are on him. Like, even if he doesn't get hit, like, if we're on top of the quarterback and he can't make a throw, I mean, that that should be critical because we're affecting the throw if he can't step into it. Um, so I think anytime well, we're too, you know anywhere cl super close around him where it affects the throw and you know maybe he throws it high or he can't step into it or now he's got to I think all those are, you know take into it so um I think I'm I'm critical on any of those we don't want I mean you definitely don't want him getting hit and you don't want him getting sacked and all that but I mean I don't even want him get you know affected by the throw I don't want a throw to be high and you know somewhere else to where you know he wasn't able to get it on target and that you know cost us a big play so I mean I think we just have to keep getting better um you know learning out where he's setting up in the pocket on certain plays because every play like that changes a lot of things if he's setting up at five yards that's a big difference for the offensive line because now you you know you can run them at seven seven eight yards you can run those big dns around and we need to be really firm up front 
if he's setting up at you know nine yards we need to know that you know because those tackles you know now you got to get a big hoop to run so i mean there's a lot that goes into it um being able to tell what play is what so we can you know figure out where we need to set up so that way where he's sitting we can you know stay off of his toes and make sure he has plenty of room to step up make a throw or uh you know do whatever he has to do with the ball yeah. thank you guys uh yeah i think um it's definitely encouraging. It's, it's stuff to build off of. Um, but, you know, I think we can't uh, give up the explosive plays because I think uh, you look at a lot of the drives, uh, those are the things that were hurting us, just giving up the chunk plays. Um, and then obviously uh, the last drive of the game, you know, putting the opportunity to, you know, get that third and four or whatever it was, third and five, to stop them and uh, didn't get it done. So uh, it was definitely tough. But. To him said how the 49ers lost the season opener and went to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, you're obviously on that team. What's your perspective from there? Uh, yeah, to be truthful, that's um, that's all I could think about. When when the game ended, I literally was thinking the exact same way um, because it, it reminded me a lot of that. Um, just played some good defense uh, that year, last year, but didn't play enough to win the game. And I think we lost by a point or two points, if I'm not mistaken. And it was definitely a huge, like, you know, hit, but we realized, like, man, we could take it as far as we want to take it and, uh, you know, just bounce back. So I truly, you know, that's what I expect from this team. You know, a lot of the same, similar uh, building blocks and character uh, of the guys and, you know, the, the people on, on, the, on this team. So I'm expecting to do the exact same thing. How do you avoid dwelling on a letdown when you guys have a lot of excitement and, and so many new faces? Felt like there was a, a buzz about seeing this team debut, like moving into next week. Uh, I think the beautiful thing about the National Football League is for every team that won and every team that lost, you got about, what, it's 12 o'clock or whatever, you got about two more hours. <laughs> and you better get moving fast. Because if you don't, then you won the game, you're probably going to lose. And if you lost the game, you're probably going to lose again. <laughs> so. You got to figure out a way to build off of it, learn from it, whatever it is, celebrate the win for 24 hours, soak in your misery for 24 hours, but then get back to work like it's the National Football League, you know, so uh, it's the best of the best, and every week you got to bring your best. So, I mean, now it's literally like my mindset. We watch the film as a group. Probably going to hear from Rabel, you know, on Wednesday when we have our meeting about it, maybe at the beginning, and like all the way on to the Chargers, so. I think it was good uh, for the situation. Obviously, the stadium. Um, but I think it, it it was pretty good. You know, obviously, just try to make sure we echoing, communicating uh, the calls and everything across. You know, the front, but also with the back end guys. And I, I think it was pretty pretty good communication. What does the body feel like after playing in a game for the full game for the first time in what eight nine months? And and what do you do maybe on Mondays to kind of get it back? Um. I think my body's sore. Like, you definitely get sore. I think my pride's a little bit more sore than my body, you know, obviously after you lose a game uh, like that. But um, honestly, just try to get in the cold tubs, get in the hot tub, get massages, you know, work out. We, I like to lift, you know, and we all pretty much get a lift in on Monday, uh, trying to work that soreness out. Um, but, yeah, you, you definitely got to be ready to go on Wednesday. So take advantage of those two days that you get. Talk to y'all on defense about the sack fumble rule, that sort of thing. Just what do you remember about what he said? And just how do you guys as defense respond to that rule when it seems like it's kind of inconsistently called? Uh, he just always tells us to scoop the ball regardless and let them make the decision. And I think that's, you know, that's exactly what KB did. Um, and you know they decided what they decided. And I ain't going to lie to you, I don't get paid to do that. I get paid to do something completely different. So. Now I let them do their job and you know I'll do mine, but you know, you can't never really, I guess, count on a ref to do anything for you. But um, you know, it is what it is. Obviously that sucks because that it could have been a, a huge play for us. But uh K B did exactly what we were always coached, you know, just finish to the recovery of the ball and you know, that's what he did and it, it makes it a harder, you know, situation where if that was a fumble, then we get the it would be a clear recovery, we get the ball and, you know, it is what it is. But uh yeah, that's kind of like what we're, we're always coached to do. Do you find the application of that inconsistent when you're watching games? Uh, no, no I think like 
maybe the motions of the throws and what they consider as a throw versus a fumble might be inconsistent. But if you recover the ball both times, you know, that's, that's and that's pretty much what we're coached is just always recover the ball if you have opportunity and let them figure it out because we don't know. It's two, you know, it's split second decisions. You have no clue what what's actually going on that fast. So just recover the ball and let them figure it out. That split second decision, I guess, is when you got, came after Carr, <laughs> I guess you got up close to his his helmet area. Mm -hmm. What uh, what can you maybe learn from that as far as a technique standpoint? And did, did you maybe kind of lose track of your hands there? Where Yeah, where like honestly, up? when I was running down there, I'm already thinking like, oh, I'm not going to hit him because I don't want to get flagged. So that's what made me, you know, try to raise my arm to match his hand when he was uh, about to throw the ball. But then like, it, it was like this weird space. You know, I, I, what I would probably tell myself is I played football for a long time, you know, maybe not thinking so much. Like I'm not, if anything I learned from that is I'm not going to think about it. It's, he's running outside the pocket. You can hit him, um, obviously, below the head and neck area. So next time I'm just going to hit him. You guys practice situations so much around here. How do you feel like the defense responded to some of those sudden change positions you were put in yesterday? Uh, I think he did a good job. Obviously, like I said, the, the last drive is you know the only thing that sucked. You know we couldn't uh, get the ball back, but um, you know obviously you, I have no control. You know none of us on defense. You know we're not responsible for anything that happens on the other side of the ball. You know we're supposed to do our job, and uh, like I, I always just challenge the guys like. Don't let their defense outplay our defense. You know, whoever we're playing that week, and that kind of keeps it out of a point finger mentality to where it's more so like, hey, like, look at what their defense just did. We got to go get that same thing because when they needed a stop, they got it. You know, but when we needed one at the end, we couldn't get it. So I think um, when you look at it from that perspective, it allows you to, you know, look at yourself and not so much look at you know what anybody else is doing. But I think he did a good job uh, with some of the sudden change stuff. Um, just responding and holding them to field goals, uh, but yeah. Any surprise to you what Arden was able to do in his debut here? Uh, no, you know I, I played with Arden in San Francisco uh, back in 2021, and you know, obviously still good friends and kept up with him. He had a good uh, year last year with the Jaguars, so uh, just knowing that he was going to have an opportunity to, you know, get a bigger role and have more opp more opportunities rushing the pass on third down, you know that's. That's, that's a part of his game that he's really good at, so it didn't surprise me at all.